Hi, welcome to Organizing Elephants. I'm Darla DeMauro, and thank you so much for joining us today. We are going to be talking with amazing women and uh, sharing their success. So today I have with me one of my uh, friends and professional heroes. Uh, she, Ellen Fay from Ellen Fay Organization, has agreed to come on and be interviewed because she's got a lot to share with women and with professionals just like us who have busy lives families, and in this case, we both own our own business, so we've got a lot going on career-wise. Ellen has the added um, distinguished uh, uh, title of having been the president for our professional organization, and I want to give a shout out to NAPO. So NAPO is the National Association for Productivity and Organizing Professionals. It's actually not a national organization, it's an international organization, and Ellen spent seven years on the board of, these, of this large organization, and she spent three years as incoming president, president, and um, past president. And so you've served um, both professionally, and you've served in this volunteer capacity, and you have a family. So um, I hope you're all going to be interested in hearing how amazing women keep life going, right? <laughs> so thank you for coming on, the Ellen. the best we can. <laughs> so glad to be here with you, Darla. Thank you. We've all got to have balance, right? Um, do you think balance is a myth like I think balance is a myth? The best description I heard, have heard of it is it, we should be shooting for harmony and not balance, that life is like a symphony orchestra and sometimes the strings are louder and sometimes the woodwinds are louder and sometimes the percussion's louder. Sometimes in a symphony there needs to be silence. And that, when you have it all together, it's really beautiful. But every, you know, sometimes certain things, sometimes work is going to be more important, sometimes family is going to be more important, and sometimes you just have to make that quiet space to regroup. I love your analogy and I know that you've used it throughout your life. So tell me a little bit more about your business. It's Ellen Fay Organization? It is. And I have evolved. I started out doing residential organizing in 2001. And then I moved to really niching with clients that ran home-based businesses, then moved into small business and really was working with my clients on business consulting, productivity, and how they were going to reach their business goals. So back up for me. Professional organizer. What exactly is that? It could be so many things. So NAPO, the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals that you talked about, we have over 3,500 members and we have so many different various niches, but it's all about empowering people to have a great quality of life by bringing order and efficiency and a little peace to their lives. So some of us are um, like I would call myself a productivity and leadership coach right now, and I can tell you how I got there. But some of us um, work in, in homes and do residential organizing. We organize people's closets and kitchens and family spaces and storage spaces. We have professionals that niche in photo organizing. We have professionals that uh, niche in financial organizing, data, technology, email. There's so many different niches. There are people that help people with emotional issues attached to their things, but it's just a very vast, vast array of uh, unique skills. But we're all, we really care about helping our clients. We want to transfer our knowledge and skills and empower them to have a great quality of life through teaching them how to be more organized and more productive in what they do. So we help busy people do what they do better. Yes. That's awesome. And manage that busyness so that they're not so stressed. Right. It's a quality of life profession. Now, when you and I were going through high school choosing our profession, neither one of us said, I want to grow up and be a professional organizer. I had a career in the corporate world, and so did you. Correct. So how did you transition? What did you do, just briefly, and then how did you transition over? So I uh, worked in hospitality. I have a degree in hotel and restaurant management. And I graduated from college working in the hotel business for a collective of about 15 years. And I rose through the ranks quickly. I was the youngest general manager for Hilton Hotels in like 1987. <laughs> so that was a long time ago. But um, it was, and like the only woman at the time to boot, okay? So it was very uncommon for women to be in those positions, much less as young as I was. Um, 
but I was working 100 hours a week. It was a very toxic environment. I didn't know then about, you know, sticking up for my rights as a woman and saying, you know, you need to pay me what you pay the guys or you need to give me those promotions that you're giving the men just because I'm a woman. I really was not healthy and the hours were insane. So I worked really hard. I taught a community college. I taught the kids. It was very inspiring. I loved it. However, there became a time that it was time to have a family, and I knew I did not want to be a mom and work to that extent. It just was not an option. So I uh, stopped working and had my kids, knowing that I would go back to work at some point, and if I was going to work that hard, I would be working that hard for myself. So my dad had his own business. I grew up with, uh, in a family of entrepreneurs. And I said, you know what, That's, I will choose a career that I have a little bit more control and I can work with healthy people in a healthy culture where people are ethical and making great choices and treating people really kindly and fairly. You could be professional and kind. You don't always, you can't always be nice, but you, you can make your decisions and create an environment and a culture that's really um, fun, enjoyable, and you can make money. So I knew that. And I, when it was time to go back to work, I just kind of said, what are my options? So how did I find out about professional organizing? We all stumble upon it really differently. So I'm really fabulous with function and space, but I don't have a lot of, um, I'm not particularly good in like, like um, tchotchkes, like window treatments and vases and things. So I hired, I had done some work in my house and I hired an interior designer to just put the finishing touches. Mm -hmm. And she saw what I did. She said, oh my gosh, you should be a professional organizer. And I said, what? And this was like 1999, 2000. So I went on the internet, which was new at the time. Okay. And I found NAPO. And I said, wow, there's an association. This is a real job. And, you know, if I told you there's thousands of people that have told that story, that they went online, they saw our association, and like, wow, this is a real job. Yeah. That's how it came to be. And when I was deciding what to do, I went and I looked. I said, that is where I'm going to ha hang my shingle. This is what I'm going to do. And that's how I started. My own story is very similar, so you're right. Mm -hmm. There's thousands of people who have said that, wait a minute, I can get paid for doing something that I love to do, and in our case, it happens to be professional organizing. That's right. so, exactly. Yeah, exactly. so that's one more reason I that I my love you. I first job. I was like, oh my gosh, they just paid me to do that? Right. I couldn't believe it because it was totally fun. Right. Yeah. And then we all say, yeah. you know, we, we uh, end up in a group of professional organizers, and we all say, what? We found our people. people. That's right. <laughs> we That's found right. our We're people. With our people. And so, you know, we've done that with professional organizing, but other people do that in other careers, mm -hmm. right? And that's mm -hmm. what I want to, um, in this TV show, I really want women who are maybe struggling in the job that they're in to know that they can be working in a corporate career and still have that aha moment of, wait a minute, there might be mm -hmm. some place that I can get paid to do whatever it is that I love. Absolutely. I call that defining success on your own terms. There you go. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're going to call it organizing elephants here. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so what, um, so speaking of elephants, right, mm -hmm. you've, you've had to juggle many in the hospitality industry, and then you start your own business, which, oh, by the way, is not easier, right? Right, right. Um, I find that I love it more, so I'm happy to work just as hard, like you said. Um, but there's a lot of organizing to be done when you're um, running your own business. So what are some of the, the productivity hacks, if you will, or mm -hmm. organizing hints that you share with your clients or that you personally use all the time? The most important things I do, well, there's a few, but let's, let's talk about them. Pick your favorites. One, <laughs> uh, one is that I'm very ruthless about what I say yes to. Mm -hmm. And if it's not an absolute yes, it's a no. So I cast off ruthlessly. And then the things I say yes to daily I or weekly sometimes. It's, you know, sometimes daily, sometimes week, whatever the week is like, I prioritize those. And I look and say, what are critical? What must be done before I, before I go to bed tonight, you know? Yeah. Or in the next day or two? And then what's the next, what's, what's important? 
And then everything else I just put in two buckets sooner or later. So I am focusing on those criticals and those importance. And I am just working through them and moving through them. And I just take those sooner or later and I put them aside. So they're not taking any energy. They're not taking any brain space. I am focusing on my highest priorities and moving them along. And then it's kind of like those puzzles. They just move up and move along. So you're normally a very focused person. Do you think if, if you're not sort of normally a very focused person that you can build that skill? It's practice and it's um, connecting the synapses in your brain. And yeah, you have, like there are things you don't have to do. There are things that if you're going to get your work done and ever want a chance to relax without worrying about what scary monsters are on those piles in my desk, or I let that person down, or I miss that deadline, or I'm spending money on a late fee or something, that you're really missing an opportunity, you have to learn to know what's important and practice and prioritize those. And it doesn't have to be a complex process. I really believe that if it's not easy, easy peasy, you're not going to do it, and you're not going to stick with it. And that's for the most highly organized person and the most global creatives out there. So all of the systems I des de uh, design for my clients are simple. They're easy. There's something you could practice and get into the routine. And if that just means you just, I, it could be anything. It could be on a whiteboard. It could be on Post-its that you just move the Post-its in or the ones that are most important today. It could be a spreadsheet. It could be a paper calendar. It could be an electronic calendar. But the concept of setting priorities and identifying my most important work even if that's once a week or every other day or whenever, the more you practice it, the more you do it, the more you see how it takes all the pressure off. And that you, that's, it's a survival mechanism yeah. for busy people. So Ellen, you mentioned systems and routine. Um, I think that's the, the bedrock of organizing. Mm -hmm. So tell us you know, what's, what's got to go into a good routine. Fitting it to who you are. All these articles that say, you have to be up at 5 in the morning, you have to do this and that. Well, that's good for that person who wrote that article. But after 17 years of working with people, everyone is different. So you have to see what works for you. I have a client that was, she's like, i got to wake up early and exercise. But she never was doing it. So we did a test. We did four different weeks. This week, you're exercising at 7 in the morning. This week, you're exercising at 11. This week, you're exercising at 4 in the afternoon. And this week, you're exercising at 7 at night. And I had her watch her behavior and determine that the four o'clock time was when she got her best exercise in. So the secret of a good routine is only listening to yourself. And to practice, be like a science experiment. Test it. See what works for you. And don't feel required to do what somebody else says. I love that. And that's actually a good segue. I wanted to bring your family into the mix Great. here because you have two sons who I are do. now grown. And launched? So one, launched? One is completely launched, and hopefully, even by the time we're done here, he may be completely launched. Okay. He's this close to a great All job. right. Fingers crossed. So, um, so the question that I get as an organizer uh, all the time is, is your house completely organized? I'm going to throw that back to you and say, all these great tips that you just gave us about keeping routines mm -hmm. and, and um, you know, do, does that work for you? Do you actually keep your own routines? And do you my house, customize your house and your family routines to your family? Of course. My house is not tremendously organized, not overly organized. You're going to walk in and there's going to be shoes here and there. It is organized in a way just enough that I could get everything I need to get done, but not so much that it becomes a chore or uh, overwhelming. So, like, where I put things is really organized. So I don't want to waste time looking for them or um, how I have my closet arranged. So I know, depending on if I'm putting a suit on or jeans on or whatever, it takes me no time to process that. So it's organized enough to meet what I need. It fits me. And I think when you work with a professional organ, when you read a book, it's very prescribed. This is what you do, chop, 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 chop. Mm -hmm. But when you work with an organizing or productivity professional, we're trained to meet to help you design a system that's gonna be exactly what you need. Right. 
So, no, so my house is not always perfect. I guarantee you that. <laughs> Nor is my office. So your boys, did they, I mean, they grew up in a sort of an mm -hmm. organized household. They have a mom who's, you know, uh, getting it done, right? Mm -hmm. Organizing elephants every day. Every day. So did they still grow up happy and healthy? And did they take any of those things with them? So this is what I know. One is so organized and um, very methodical. And the other is so disorganized and very much a wing it kind of guy. And he's very proud of the pile of stuff on his desk at work. He says, people come into my office and they say, what is this? And he pulls, he says, I could pull that out. And he knows exactly where everything is. So he's kind of proud of that. So I think you, you're born a certain way. Mm -hmm. And um, what I do and what we do in our profession is teach you skills so it's easier. But you're, we don't want to change who you are. Because if we change who you are, then it's not going to work for you. So I always use the uh, metaphor, it's like playing the piano. You don't just instantly sit down and play a piano and know how to play it. You have to learn skills to do it. And the more you do it, the better you become. And we have to teach our clients skills. I don't expect anyone to know how to be organized or productive. That's something I teach, yeah. just like the piano. Yeah. If you could think back to your younger days, you know, your 20-year-old self, is there some advice that you would give that young woman? Because you and I are running against, running into those, those young women right now, right. today, and maybe somebody's watching the show. And, uh, you know, what would we say to them about today's work environment? Oh, believe in yourself. And if you run into an obstacle, don't think it's all about you. I mean, I, I lived many years saying, what's wrong with me? And only now, in the, like, you know, I volunteered. I, I, this, this being president of NAPO was a volunteer position. But I proved to myself, I mean, we, we did some amazing things during my term. I'm really proud of where we've moved the profession. But I also got a lot back from that volunteering. And I learned that I'm pretty, I, I mean, I'm really, I'm pretty um, together and I'm very competent. And what I saw is a roadblock and a question in my 20s is what's wrong with me was really people being like maybe threatened or even intimidated to a sense or I was making them look bad. So trust your gut, trust your instincts, keep doing what you know you can do and just go get them, just go get them. I love that, yeah, yes. Absolutely. Because we all have something to offer. Right? Even the disorganized mm -hmm. among us, yeah. uh, especially sometimes the disorganized among us, we have things to offer this world. Oh my God, yes. And thank God we're not all the same. Right. right? Of course, <laughs> of course. I mean, my clients have other gifts that I could never do. Yes. And that is the focus of what, uh, the work we do together, is leveraging their strengths, maximizing their strengths, letting them go out and write musicals to change um, the world, or teach doctors to have compassion, or help people be uh, physically healthier and emotionally healthier through all, all the different things my clients do. They're just amazing souls. Mm -hmm. And because we maximize their strengths and I help them with what's harder for them, mm -hmm. they can go do and share the gifts with the world. Right. Yep. So yeah, I mean, if, if everyone was good at being organized or productive or, or that kind of thing, they couldn't do what they do well. Right. Yeah, absolutely, Darla. It's really important. It's really important that that um, not having an affinity for organization, people don't think I'm a I'm a loser. I'm a failure. They've been taught through school that that's what happens, and that's not true. But it's so not true. Right. They have such great gifts, so we they can go get support, and that's what our profession is all about. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I know that one of your we only have a few minutes left, and I know that one of your passions is helping people. Um, women specifically um, get over or deal with potentially the idea of not being able to say no. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get ourselves into trouble because we want to do it all. We've been told we can have it all. And um, so, so tell me about maybe a situation with a client or how, you know, some advice that you would give women who just have a packed schedule and have a lot going on in their life. It's, it's heavy. It's, you know, I, I just like breathed in and yeah. I felt that because yeah. I think we all deal with that. So 
some of my mantras are just because I can doesn't mean I should. That's a okay? favorite of mine. Right, I know. <laughs> for right. sure. So, and then, and then the, the tool I've created, and I work with my clients to do this for them as well, is we create a filter list of what requirements, like what questions do I have to ask myself before I say yes? Now, I always tell everyone, you don't say yes. You always say, let me, let me think about that. So always build in like a 24-hour pause. You know, you know, ready, pause, then think about it. Even if it's an obvious yes, I'm still going to recommend you build in a pause. Mm -hmm. And then say, is this going to help me reach my goals? Or what's important to me? Or important to someone I really care about? Right. Or is it going to make me money? Or whatever your goals are, is this going to help me get there? And if it's a yes, great. And if it's not, you better think twice about why you're saying yes. Because if you're saying yes to something that's not important, here's my analogy. Life's like Thanksgiving plate. If you're eating the parsnips and rutabagas because you don't want to let Aunt Martha down, you're not eating the stuff you love. And if you do that every day, you're going to be miserable. So you got to focus on the things on your plate that you love. Say yes to those and say no to the things that you don't care about. Yeah. So any more tips, one, one or two last tips that you want to share with us about um, you know, how to get organized? Maybe we talked a lot about uh, saying yes, saying no, prioritizing, any physical, how to organize your desk or anything that you, you know, really love and really share with clients a lot? Um, I'm a firm believer that your desk should be clear. And your piles, or however you are, should be like on a side desk. Or, but the space that you work in should only have what you're working on now. And I learned that I had a really bad concussion. I was at a client's and I was organizing something and I went up and I hit the bottom of a shelf. So I had a concussion. And I felt like this is, it was a gift because in a way, I now know how somebody with a brain injury or ADHD feels. I remember walking in my kitchen one day, my kitchen cabinets were open, my dishwasher was halfway unloaded, and I had a half a peanut butter and jelly sandwich made on the island. It's like, whoa, this is, this is what some people live like all the time. And thank God the concussion healed and I got better. But the only way I got through that time was to have nothing on my desk except that one thing I was working on. Because that I, if, if I, I got distracted, I was able to say, look down and say, this is what I'm working on. So take everything off of your desk, put it aside if you want to find it, put it in a box, put it behind you, put it on a side desk. But stay focused on your most important tasks. I think that is so brilliant because in this day and age, we are so distracted every minute, every device that we walk past. Oh my past. God, turn those alerts <laughs> off. You don't need them. They say it takes 15 minutes to re-get to where you were, to ramp up to where you were once you've been distracted. And, and I that's if you come back. Sometimes you right. don't even make it back so from you your distraction. you never finish anything. You never yeah. check anything off. Yeah. Yeah, it's really hard. It's hard so, to get things done. So having that clear desk is a way just to give yourself, your brain, a mm -hmm. way and a space to focus on what you're working on. Absolutely. I love it. Great. I love it. So, Ellen, thank you so much for coming on. This has been a lot of fun, a lot of great tips, and I know our audience is going to uh, think, hopefully take one or That's two right. things away from this and really find that piece that we've been talking about. I appreciate you uh, watching Organizing Elephants with Darla DeMauro, and I hope you'll tune in again next time. You are watching Radnor Studio 21, an arts, educational, and entertainment station proudly serving the main line and greater surrounding area.